my name is Ravi Varma. I am a Scrum.org professional Scrum trainer and I am also the founder and org whisperer at Smooth Apps. Today I want to talk to you about something that I learned uh, in my professional Scrum Master class with Ken Schwaber in Boston many years ago. Um, there was one particular exercise in the class that left us all really shaken up. Um, many of us were upset, some of us started fighting with Ken. Those of you who have attended a Scrum.org class, especially the PSM1 class, probably know what I'm talking about, which exercise I'm talking about. Uh, but anyway, I don't want to give it away in case you haven't attended a class. Um, maybe you should. But uh, the challenge uh, that Ken gave to all of us was uh, related to ethics. One of the things that Ken wanted us to noodle on, to reflect on, was a question about how we practice ethics uh, or apply ethics and ethical behavior in the uh, software industry. And one of the questions he asked us to reflect upon was, have we become so desensitized to unethical behavior uh, in the software industry that we regularly engage in this kind of behavior or we enable it, condone it, ignore it, uh, behavior that we would never ever tolerate as customers in other avenues in other industries and the reason that Ken felt that this question was important for us to consider as software professionals was that um, today software has permeated every part of our life we have software which is controlling our cars software controlling planes software controlling our smartphones which has uh, you know, which have access to our financial information, our photographs, uh, all our communication. Um, we have software which might be controlling our home. And despite our best intentions, if we don't um, apply the highest standards to our behavior, to the quality of our code, to ethics, it's possible that we will allow bad quality software to go into our communities, which can cause unintended consequences, which could create irreversible loss of life, right? So we have to be, the stakes are high. We have to be really careful. Um, when it comes to ethics and professionalism, there might be two dimensions. One is malicious intent. So you think about the software in uh, Volkswagen cars, which was maliciously intended to defraud the public, defraud the whole planet. Um, into thinking that the Volkswagen cars were not emitting, um, spewing out emissions that would hurt the planet, right? Um, think about Wells Fargo. Software was injected, uh, which stole money from innocent customers. So one dimension of unethical behavior in the software industry could be engineers intentionally either engaging in the release of software that harms communities and stakeholders, or becoming passive bystanders and looking the other way. The second dimension of unethical behavior and software could be uh, taking shortcuts with quality. Maybe you do not have uh, kind of intent or malice in your mind as an engineer. Um, you're not doing it to harm someone, but you are enabling the release of software which is not fully tested. And who knows uh, if that software is being used for a self-driving car it's using it's being used to manage uh, an airplane um, under pressure you release something uh, which you know is not ready for prime time even though it was not your intention to harm people it's possible that that decision could cause irreversible loss of life right so whether you're talking about kind of the intent malicious intent or you don't have a malicious intent, but you're just cutting corners because you want to protect your job, you want to meet a deadline. Both are examples of unethical behavior in the software industry, which could have severe consequences to our customers and communities and stakeholders. And we want to be cautious about those, right? So what do you do? Um, chances are some of you uh, who are still watching might be like, yeah, blah, blah, blah. Uh, this is all like motherhood and apple pie. Uh, in the real world, stuff like this doesn't work. Um, those of you who are curious to say, yeah, I, I get it. How do you operationalize this? Some time ago, a bunch of Scrum.org professionals, Scrum trainers got together and we created a software code of ethics. 
and this is available at softwareethics.org. Uh, as we started talking about how do you operationalize ethical behavior in software delivery, we started thinking about what are the concerns, uh, typical concerns we need to manage. And the first concern was um, value. Software, we, we exist as software engineers um, on agile teams or on software delivery teams for one and only one purpose. We want to deliver value to our customers. So one of the first lines in the code of ethics is, I will understand and communicate the value of the work delivered. So Ken Schwaber challenged us not to be like dumb order takers, but trusted advisors. So if you're on a software delivery team, someone has asked you to do something, before you go and start becoming a dumb order taker, ask, help me understand what value this may provide to our customers, our communities, our stakeholders. The second is quality, um, uncompromising attention to quality. Um, I will define and uphold a clear and transparent standard of quality and I will not compromise on that standard, right? So realize that when you compromise on quality, even though you do not have a malicious intent, you recognize that software has permeated all aspects of our life and either it could be hacked or the software could have an unintended behavior uh, which you did not catch in your testing and you don't want to expose your customers and communities to that kind of risk because they didn't sign up for it. The second is uh, kind of being a passive minority, right? So um, you know you know that there's some piece of vital information um, that reveals risk, that reveals unprofessional conduct, but you withhold that information and therefore you absolve yourself. By doing so, you absolve yourself of any guilt and uh, responsibility to say, well, I didn't do it. I knew something was going on, but I didn't participate. So the next line of the code of ethics is I will not withhold any information that might harm my team, our stakeholders, our users, or the public community. Um, the next one is about certainty. Sometimes under pressure, when executives or powerful people who have the ability to fire us or ding our rating, performance appraisal rating, we create uh, uh, implications or we imply that there is certainty. Oh yeah, this, this, this project is going to get delivered on this date, 100% guarantee. Yeah, yeah, we're going to be team players, nights, weekends, what have you. We'll make sure we meet the deadline. You know in your heart, you know what? Not sure this is going to happen. You have all these uncertainties in your mind, the risks in your mind, but you're hoping that somewhere along the way, before other people realize, before it becomes obvious, either managers or executives will find another bright, shiny object to go chase, or someone else will screw up, and then you don't, you won't get caught. Your team won't get caught, right? So the next line in the software ethics, kind of code of ethics, is I will not imply certainty where it doesn't exist. So there's lot of uncertainty in our line of work let's be transparent and say look I can't guarantee this and here are the risks and we can either choose to manage the risks live with the risks uh, or be course correct but what is not okay is to be silent about the risks and pretend the risks do not exist next challenge is uh, hoarding information uh, from an ethical behavior sometimes people hoard information because it's job security or uh, when everything goes to hell, you come in like a knight in shining armor and you rescue everyone, right? So part of being an ethical software engineer is to self selflessly share your knowledge with others in service of value for stakeholders and community, right? So that's the next line. I will selflessly share my knowledge with others. Um, another challenge from an ethics perspective is uh, becoming stagnant. So. The industry is changing, the art and craft of software engineering is changing, and if I have outdated knowledge from the Stone Ages, it's possible that even though I may want to behave in an ethical way, I may not know how to unless I update myself. I keep learning the new techniques because those new techniques, principles, values, practices could open up new ways uh, for me to stay true to value, stay true to quality. Um, and then stay true to the to the investors, the market, the community, my my team members, right? So, continuous self improvement is part of uh, being an ethical software engineer. One of the things that I I feel um, is important. This was I think it was suggested by Ty Crockett, one of our uh, professional scrum trainers, is to say, 
I will do the best I can. So there's a lot of ambiguity. This is not a legal artifact. Ultimately, you've got to look in the mirror and ask yourself, did I do the best that I possibly could have to stay true to my profession, to my ethics, to my core values and the values of our profession? So um, that is part of being an ethical software engineer, um, being able to look in the mirror and to say, I did the best I could. And one of the last uh, elements is um, accountability. So sometimes we may raise ourselves to behave at a higher level. Um, however, it's awkward and uncomfortable to go and challenge a colleague who may not be displaying that same high level of ethical behavior. And so again, we sometimes, um, you know, introverted software engineers like myself, we give ourselves an out to say, well, I did the best I could, but so-and-so didn't, but that's on them, it's not on me. So we want to shut that back door. So we want to say, I will challenge anyone that does not demonstrate the professional standards herein. So you don't get a pass if you follow these standards and you observe someone else is not, and then you give them a pass. You don't, um, you don't hold them accountable. Uh, and finally, last but not the least, I will uphold this code of ethics for myself and others so we collectively improve the software profession. Um, you know, when you think of software engineering, it's something, it's a beautiful profession. Uh, those of us who love and care about, about it, uh, it's not ours to destroy. It is something that was passed down to us by our predecessors. And um, ethical software engineering also means that we leave this profession better than we found it for the next generation of software engineers. So this is bigger than you or me. This is bigger than a project, bigger than a company. Hopefully this profession will grow stronger, more nobler, more effective, uh, and future generations will take pride in saying, I am a professional software engineer. The closing thought I want to leave you with is something uh, that Ken Schwaber always uh, often reminds us, which is like a um, moral compass in the scrum.org community. Uh, and the quote that Ken shared with us is, do the right thing and the results will follow. And if the results didn't follow, mm -hmm. at least you did the right thing. So I hope you found this video uh, useful. I hope you will integrate this into your team working agreements, possibly in your retrospective and always ask yourself, did we do the right thing? Um, and did we do the best we could to become ethical professional software engineers? Thank you, keep calm, scrum on.